Hey there, it's Nathalie. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you how to take a thrift store sweater and change it into, sew it into a pillow with tassels. Now the tassels is going to be in a different video. So the first thing I did, uh, I took this sweater and laid it all out on my cutting board and then I uh, cut the sleeves of it off, uh, cut the top part of it off. So this video was made as a live on my Facebook and so it's kind of a little bit rough rougher than what I would normally do. Anyway, so this sweater has been woven to where it looks like it's wrong side out. And so like even, uh, and I'm showing here, I'm showing you the inside of the sleeve and the inside of the sleeve looks like the right side, but it's, so it's just kind of a cool pattern and a little bit different. And uh, so I'm not going to trim it down to its size just exactly yet. And I, I have some drop cloth, and I cut the drop cloth. My pillow forms are um, 16 uh, inch square. And so I cut this 17, I cut the drop cloth, I evened it off, and I cut it into a 17 inch square. And that's gonna allow me a half an inch seam allowance all the way around. And then so then it'll be finished off at 16 by 16. So some of the people on the internet and the interweb and all of those places. Um, I've always thought maybe cut it a little bit larger, but they say cut it exactly the size or cut it, you know, that inch. So when it's finished, it's exactly the size of your form. So that's what I'm doing. So I pinned this around so it's kind of in, you can see the little bit of a pucker, but so I've got it where it's straight to the design. And um, then there's some give in the sweater. And so I can stretch that out and pull it to, to fit the, the drop cloth just a little bit see like that and so then when it goes into the pillow form it's going to be just fine it's not that much of a difference in the in the dimensions of it and i also i took the drop cloth down to the very bottom and just to the tail end of that sweater but you don't have to if you wanted to not include the tail end of it you could just cut that off but i went ahead and and that's, that's the area that I'll use for the bottom of the pillow, and then I'll hem that by hand when we close up the pillow opening. So I'm doing lots of explanations, and because it was so rough, because it was a live video, I've cut a lot of the vocal stuff out and doing the voiceover. So off to the sewing machine, and I've, I'm setting this on a long stitch because this is just like a basting stitch to hold the sweater to the uh, drop cloth lining so to speak. So I'm going to speed around uh, all four of the sides on both of the pieces. And just a long stitch and I'm stitching with just a presser foot width uh, which is not my half inch seam allowance. Sometimes I wish I could sew that fast. So if you wanted to watch this full time with the unedits you could go over to My Hall Closet on Facebook, My Hall Closet and I have the live, I, I saved it, you know, so it's in my, uh, in my feed over there. And you can also go over to myhawkcloset.com, uh, my blog, and sign up to get on my mailing list. I've got a free resource library for patterns and all kinds of stuff that I do. And I'll put the step-by-step -step sometime, maybe in the next week or two, I'll get that up, uploaded onto my blog with, you know, photos, still photos and uh, written instructions for that. I am stitching the uh, drop cloth wrong side, I mean the to the back side of the sweater. I need the, the lining underneath. So, and the drop cloth doesn't have a right or wrong side, but it's stitched to the wrong side of the sweater. So now that I have all around all four edges of the front and all four edges of the back, I'm gonna cut. I decided I didn't want to cut it before I stitched it, so I'm cutting off my excess. And this is going to be stitched twice, once with the basting stitch that we just did or that I just did, and then once whenever, I, the next time, whenever I stitch it, when I put them together and stitch it, then they're gonna be nice and secure. And I don't need to finish off the edges. You could if you wanted to, but I don't need to. My boys are all grown. Hopefully they don't have pillow fights anymore. This is not gonna get very much use. We don't hardly even sit on that couch where that's gonna go. And uh, so I'm, I, I don't feel any need to like surge or uh, clean finish the, those seams. It's just kind of for fun anyway. And I'm thinking that maybe t 
tomorrow or the next day, I'm going to go back to our thrift store and see if they've got an ugly Christmas sweater. And I might just do a fun, funky, ugly Christmas sweater pillow. If I can find one, they have to be the right size. Too. They have to be big enough to, uh, to go over that pillow form. All right, so now I'm going to put these now right sides of the sweater together. So, okay, you can see in the video that the sweaters are on the inside and the drop cloth is on the outside. And like I said, there's no right or wrong to the to the right or wrong side to the drop cloth. And I'm going to pin this all the way around, and at the bottom I am going to leave a 10 inch opening. And so that way I can get my pillow form in there. It'll go in there pretty easily. And uh, so uh, whenever I go to the sewing machine and I'm out of the frame, I apologize about that. That was, you know, I'm still learning how to do the Facebook Live thing. Do a double stitch, a back stitch at the beginning of that opening. That's at the bottom and then down around all of the sides. Pivot at the corners. Sorry for being out of the frame. I'm sorry, guys. Please forgive me. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Anyway, go all the way around. And then when we get to the end, clip those corners. Make sure you don't clip your stitches, your sewing machine stitches, but clip those corners so it'll make it easier, make it a, a better corner whenever you turn that thing right, right side out. And again, I have a 10-inch opening, and it's double-stitched at the beginning and back-stitched at the beginning and at the end. And this really, in real time, it was, uh, it took me 32 minutes, and that includes changing the needle in my sewing machine because I broke my needle. All right, so I'm t poking out the corners, and I just pointed to the needles that I used to replace my uh, broken needle there. So I've got it all nice and turned right side out, and again, my camera is kind of off to the angle, and so as I learn how to do Facebook Lives, I'll get better and better at this. We all got to start someplace, right? The main thing is that you start. So stuff that pillow in. Get it all up into the corners and kind of manipulate it around. I really think this turned out so cute. I'm so happy with it. I love the way it looks on my couch, even though I don't sit on my couch. Anyway, so I pinned up the closing. Now, you didn't see that because I was way off camera for that, but I pinned the opening Two, and I'm going to do a ladder stitch to close this up. And I've already hidden the knot on the inside of the sweater through the uh, drop cloth. And so I'm going to stitch through the sweater and the drop cloth because I don't want it just to stitch into the sweater. And so the ladder stitch is just exactly that. You go in on one side and do about a quarter of an inch seam and then lay that thread right straight across, exactly across the street, just like going straight across the street. So it's going to be like the rung on a ladder, straight, not sideways, not a whip stitch. You can whip it if you want to. And then that second stitch, now that I'm going to go ahead, it's up at the top, and I'm going to lay that thread. There it is right there across my finger, and I'm going to come right down, straight down into that bottom layer again, again catching both of the pieces of fabric, the sweater and the drop cloth. Pull that needle out, and I'll do about, oh, three or four, maybe five of those stitches like that. Just, again, going straight up, across, straight down, and across. And, you know, if you're other-handed, left-handed, and whichever way the stitches work best for you, that's the way you need to do that. You don't have to do it exactly the way I do it, that's for sure. This is just the way that I like to do it. So, again, that's called a ladder stitch. Right straight back across, down, and then about every, oh, four or so stitches. Now, so whenever I close this up, I'll just pull that thread, and I close it up, it makes a nice, smooth closing right there. So then I'm going to take about three stitches, just in case that, you know, just to secure it, in case the thread pops. Like I said, the guys don't have pillow fights anymore, but you know what? You just never do know. You never know. So anyway, I just like to do that. It's just a habit with me. So I just take those extra stitches. Okay, and we're almost through with this. So I want to thank you for watching. Thank you if you like this. If it helped you, like and subscribe. You can feel free to share it. It's, like I said, it's not one of my better ones. But thank you for hanging out to the end. I did a little uh, 
figure eight kind of knot to tie this off and then on my next video I'm going to show you how I made my tassels. I also did that as a live but it's a much better video. So again thank you for liking my channel and subscribing to my channel and uh, hanging out to the end of this video and I would love to know if you like this and if you have decided to make you a found you a cool sweater that you can turn into a pillow. Fluff that thing out a little bit. There it is little pattern that's on the sweater and it's going to look great on my couch thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time bye